another episode of 30 Minutes with Andy. As a reminder, this call is every single Wednesday from 1 to 1.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on my Facebook Live. Uh, today, I have one of my newer friends in the KW uh, ecosystem. I thought you were going to say favorite friends. Uh, one of my newest favorite friends in the KW ecosystem. I met her in uh, Charlotte for the first time. She was leading a, uh, a, a skills camp for our region. Um, and I was just blown away by her presentation, the way she carries herself, the way she presents KW and carries the brand and wears it well. So Hannah Kent, how are you? Good, good. Thank you for that intro. I appreciate that. Yeah. So give everybody, tell everybody a little bit about you, who you are, what you're about, kind of how you ended up at KW, just to give them an idea of a, of a starting point. Then we'll go from there. Awesome. Cool. Okay. So one, thank you for having me. This is really fun. I'm over in Asheville, North Carolina. I suspect you guys may have heard of that. Um, and we love referrals. So feel free to send them over. I'm the team leader here, so I hold the same seat that Andy holds, and um, I've been in this or been with this company for five years in Asheville, and I, prior to that, spent 11 years in the fitness apparel industry. So, there's really only so much you can do with stretch pants. I was designing clothes for 11 years, and just to be transparent, was totally burnt out. Um, met at the time the team leader at this office, and we talked, and I came on as as his admin. So that was just over five years ago, and I've been with KW ever since, but KW is all I know. So I'm in conversation, obviously, with agents at all other all these other firms, but, um, but KW is my only real estate experience, and um, I've never done a real estate transaction. So I run our company. We have seven offices. I'm the CEO of those offices, and for the longest time, I, and a little bit still, carry this imposter syndrome because I think, oh, why? Why am I in this seat when I've never done real estate? Yeah. And what I've realized in the last really only year is that I don't have to know how to do real estate. I have to know how to lead and I have to know how to inspire people. Um, but I don't need to know how to do a transaction. So I did go to real estate school. I, like I said, we love referrals. Um, I do those every once in a while, but I don't intend on doing production. So I know Jason was on here last week. He's amazing. Um, and we obviously have very different paths, but I can't. Um, I can't speak to general production in real estate. I can speak to building big businesses and building empires, but uh, general real estate's not my thing. So I I love KW and what it's done for me, my family, and the trajectory that our life is now on because of it. But um, but it's been a it's a funny it was a funny path to get here. Yeah. And because of conversations with agents, I know a lot of us have funny paths that lead us to real estate. So I'm not unique in that regard. It, it's crazy because I spent 13 and a half years in the fitness industry as well uh, oh. before before I went to, I was the general manager of several uh, Gold's Gym International locations um, in, in the Triad Triangle area. So uh, I know that language very well, um, but yeah, it's funny. There's a lot of fitness people in, uh, that end up, you know, come from that sales mm -hmm. and sales background that end up in real estate. It's kind of cool. Um, so what are some of those things that you're doing to uh to benefit the kw brand like what are you i know i learned a wealth of knowledge from you when i was with you in charlotte for a couple of days what are some of those things that you're doing to make the kw brand stand out so i think there are two ways to look at that question one is how do i as hannah leverage the brand and one thing i do and we'll get into communities here in a little bit but I really push my agents to be part of KW communities. At the end of the day, we all want to have a sense of belonging and it's a lot more fun and a lot easier to do business with like-minded people. So yeah. I spend a lot of my time encouraging my people to be part of a community, whether it's Rainbow Network, DEI, luxury, anything, just find your niche. And so that's not just professionally, that's because we we want to feel like we're part of a community. We want to feel like we're part of something bigger than ourselves. Yeah. And so I think KW worldwide, um, what I like to think I do for them is encourage people to join all of the communities that they put time and effort into building. Um, and then here locally, we do that same thing. We have DEI in our local office. We have a women's group, which I'll talk about in a little bit. Um, we have a lot of different stuff here that has helped us as a massive Keller Williams office. We have over 400 agents. And like I said, seven locations. 
we have to work to create smaller groups. Otherwise, everybody's going to feel lost. Right. So I think one word in answering that question would be communities. Yeah. Um, so what are what are some of the things let's take it down on a let's localize it. What um, specifically with KW Asheville, which you're the CEO of, mm -hmm. what are some things you've implemented at KW Asheville that you're proud of that have had the domino effect? So again, I'll be totally transparent. Being here for five years, we've had a lot of ups and downs with our agent leadership council. Mm -hmm. We've tried to navigate it and figure out how to get buy-in. And I feel like we're on a real upward trajectory now because we have buy-in from our council. And there have been it's been different sizes during my time here too. At one point there were like 17 people on it. At one point there were 10. I think we have seven right now for this year. And uh -huh. that we found that that smaller more intimate group is a lot more impactful yep. because those people have real ownership over their community or their committee. Um, so here I lean into my ALC to then create communities for our agents to be a part of. And those communities are career development, culture, luxury, um, wealth. So one thing we did, Andy, and you guys may do this, and if you don't, you may want to take a page out of our book. We had um, growth committee for the longest time, and it was all rooted in profit share. Mm -hmm. And that's so important and so beneficial to so many people, but we weren't getting a lot of buy-in because I think it was one of those, oh, pie in the sky. Yeah, that person made a million dollars. There is a way to do that, but we found that just that story wasn't enough to get buy-in for growth. Right. So rather than having our ALC growth committee just be profit share, it's now personal growth. Um, we have a ton of buy-in. So like next week we have somebody coming who's talking about mindset, purely mindset. Um, we've done a segment of, in the past about boundaries, the power of no to protect your yes. I, there's a lot to be said for mindset in this industry and our growth committee has supported us in, in wanting to promote that. The other thing, uh, so that's not growth through profit share, it's growth through your personal self. Yeah. Um, the other committee we have is KW Wealth. And we took a page out of Brett Tanner's book because yeah. at the end of the day, we are all in real estate for the money and the good that the money can do. So whether that's for your family or your community, we chose real estate as the vehicle to fund our best life. And we're not, we, I don't want people to be ashamed to talk about how much money they want to net or what sort of, like I said, what sort of empire they want to build. So our KW Wealth Committee talks about how to use your whole life insurance policy to buy investment properties or sure, how to yeah. you have a compounding interest savings account like these kind of things have giant long-term effects but we weren't taught that in school we were taught like parallelograms like <laughs> right so, you know so we are spending more time teaching to the whole agent here in Asheville rather than just how to sell more homes yeah yes we have to continue to sell homes and we as Keller Williams can help promote them becoming a more fulfilled person in their whole body rather than just real estate. That was a long answer. <laughs> no, that's that's great. And and that's one of the reasons it's funny you say that uh, that you, uh, about the market center, because that's that was the whole purpose in the creation of this show was bringing. It's not just I don't just have real estate people on. There's wealth managers on. There's insurance specialists on. There's um, tax strategists on and uh, executives and CEOs. So it's, that's the biggest thing is just we, it's finding avenues and different ways to give value to the people that we serve, whether that's inside of the market center or even in our, out to our communities, which brings me to, I know my next topic for you, which I know you're crazy passionate about, and I know very little about just what you talked about here and there in Charlotte. So you are the co-founder of this massive following that is called Power of Women. Tell everybody what that is, where it came from, what it's about, what you guys do. Just give them that 30,000 foot view of Power of Women. Perfect. So I want to preface this by saying, if you're a man, please don't stop listening. <laughs> the, the premise of this whole thing was I needed a tribe. I needed support. And it, I found that in creating a community. As men, you all want to be part of something too, right? You may not want to be part of my women's group. Well, you may, but you're not allowed. But uh, but this was all really selfish. And I think a lot of people's biggest and most successful things come 
from being selfish. Because if you need something, probably other people in this world need it too. And to uh, I'll give you a big 30,000 foot view. To, but what started all of this was I get to be the mom to two little girls. And their names are Josephine and Genevieve. And I like to say my greatest party trick is that they were born on the same day, two years apart. So both of my daughters were born on 11-11, two years and three hours apart. How do those bar bar birthday parties it, go? Well, so far it's good because they just think <laughs> everybody has the same birthday. Yeah. But when they're like 12 and 14, I think we're going to have a real problem. Um, but I so I have these two great children who I just adore. And the youngest is two. And when I came back, or two and a half, when I came back from that maternity leave, that's when the opportunity for me to step into the CEO position came about. And so I was so excited. I worked hard, you know, on my journey through KW to get to this spot. And I was ready to give 100% to Keller Williams as CEO. And I was ready to give 100% to my home life as mom, not realizing I can never be 200%. Hmm. And so that's where I started to crumble. I'm like, wow, I'm failing everywhere. I couldn't be 100% at work. I couldn't be 100% at home. I was exhausted. You better trust and believe I was not taking care of myself because I was just trying to hold all these things in the air. And I, my OP, who is a man, um, said, Hannah, there are women who've done this before you. And he wasn't belittling my experience, but he was saying there are women that have created massive businesses and there are women who have been incredible moms Call them, find the, who those women are and talk to them. And so there were a few of those women in town that I just picked up the phone and said, I'm struggling. How can I be great at both? And I, one was holding myself to an unattainable standard. Yeah. No one's hundred percent. And so one of those women is an incredible lender in town. She's with movement mortgage and she's a mom of five and she built her entire movement mortgage business. Um, well, a lot of it as a single mom. So she really had a lot on her plate and we got together and started talking and she's like, I didn't do it alone. You know, you always hear, oh, it takes a village and it, right. does. it takes a village to, to be a, a woman too, not just to raise kids. And so I think what, what was so neat to me was the connection that came from my vulnerability and how many other women said, wait, me too. I struggle with that or that's been hard for me. And Kim and I decided, all right, we're not the only people who've had a hard time with this. What if we gathered more women and we talked about it more openly? Like, hey, this sucks. Or, wow, this really, this works for me. Um, or I've been there. Uh -huh. So what we did was gather eight women from our local firms because I didn't want it to be a KW thing. This was about creating a community in our right. market. And so we had eight head turners that were female from local firms we gathered them because we're in Asheville. We're lucky to have the Grove Park and it's this gorgeous hotel. So we gathered them for lunch. Shocking. All eight of them said yes. And they showed up. So at that lunch table, we said the same thing we'd already talked about. Uh, do you guys want to support each other regardless of firm affiliation? Do you as women want to support each other as women? And it was a resounding yes. And I did notice there, we were at that table for almost three hours and not once did someone say, oh, well, I'm with Sotheby's or I'm with nest or whatever it was just humans having conversations with humans and there was no competition at the table right that was two years ago and since we've now grown we host a quarterly event um it is called power of women and we have we cap it at 150 women and now we're starting to open up chapters so maybe there's a woman in burlington that wants maybe. to maybe in burlington um, but it's an incredible way to create community and let's call a spade a spade. It's also a way to get business. Yeah. I recruit to my office better now because people want to be in business with me as someone who empowers women. My agents have all kinds of vendors and stuff that come to our events now that are female. They get business from it. They create a stronger relationship with their vendor because they say, hey, thank you for being a great inspector. Will you come as my guest to Power of Women? It's just a really abundant way to create relationship. So yes, we charge, we sell tickets and we provide breakfast. We have speakers. Um, it's a business and it's a true collective in that we've brought a lot of high powered business women together to talk about what's really awesome in life and what really sucks. Yeah. And those groups, we have a speaker speak to the group. So it's not as much of 
collaborative uh, experience, you know, a lot like a lot of our KW things are. Right, right. But we have also found that oftentimes in those situations, and maybe for men as well, when those women go into that room, sometimes it's the only hour they have to themselves for that week, month, whatever, and they just want to listen. Everybody wants to be a better version of themselves, mm-hmm. and we all have something to learn from other people. So, like the event, the Power of Women event we have coming up in May, the speaker is an author of a book called Go Follow Lead. And the whole premise of her keynote speech at our upcoming event is how to lead yourself. If you can lead yourself, you can lead anybody. But like I said earlier, often we lead ourselves last. I I always put myself on the back burner because I'm like, oh, my kids need me. My husband needs me. My office needs me. Uh And now I am getting to a space where I've started to use no as a complete sentence. It took me almost 40 years to realize I can just say no. Do you want to go out to dinner? No, I don't have to say no because I have to watch the kids or I have to do this or I have work to do. I just say no. So I've gotten really strict with my boundaries and how I spend my time. Yeah. Because as we all know, time cannot, it doesn't come back. Money comes back. You, you can always make money. You cannot make more time. And so I don't have guilt around telling people no anymore. Yeah. What, I don't um, know how to do that, but yeah, I'm no. about this collective. <laughs> And I'm passionate about where I spend my time. Yeah, hundred percent. So, where, when it comes to power women, where, what's your, what's your vision for it from this point? Obviously, it's grown exponentially since you know the inception of it. What does it look like for you? What is your vision for it as the co-founder of it in the next two, three, four, five years? What do you want that to look like? So, it, this started because I was having a hard time as a working mom. But now my now that it started to unfold and I realize how many people want to be a part of this, and I realize there's a lot of women thing, women groups. There's still space in the women's empowerment industry for right. another group. So I have no fear that we won't continue to grow. When this started, what I wanted to do was empower women to know they don't have to ask for permission to build the life that they love. N- nobody's going to give you your dreams if you don't want to fight for them. You know, all the things we read about in books. And, and so... What I wanted to do was say, hey, go for it. It's it's there. You are enough. You are worthy of whatever you dream of. And it doesn't mean you love your family less if you choose yourself every once in a while. Yeah. Quite frankly, you should choose yourself more than every once in a while. Um, but now that we've gotten into it and I'm seeing the connection it creates, I'm seeing the community we've built here in Asheville. And now we're starting to open chapters in other states, South Carolina, Kentucky, those hopefully with you guys. Um, but what I'm, what I'm noticing now is that women, like I'm almost 40 and I, there are women in my group that are 75. There are women in my group that are 25. All of us are, and I don't know if it's society or what, but all of us are sort of recovering from a lifetime of people pleasing where we give, 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 but we don't ask for what we want because we don't want to be a burden or whatever. And I wanted to empower women to go for whatever it is they want. Now, my hope as this grows is that, yes, we grow power of women across the whole country and there are chapters all over that inspire and empower, but that eventually it trickles down into our younger generation. I want my two-year-old and my four-year-old to know that they can have whatever they want. And I'm not discounting my upbringing. My parents were incredible. But for some reason, I kind of did what I was told. I'm like, well, I'll go to school and then I'll get married and then I'll get a job. But it's worked out for me, but maybe that's not what I wanted, you know? Yeah. And now I'm almost 40 and I'm like, well, shoot, I want more. Yeah. And I don't want to feel guilty for wanting more. And if my kids can start at four or 10 or 15 and have that confidence and that sense of empowerment, holy cow, we can change the entire face of society here yeah. in America yeah. or beyond. So it started as, hey, let's get breakfast as women and enjoy each other's company. And now I'm like, no, let's freaking change the way young women are raised in this country yeah, and let awesome. them know they can have whatever they want. Yeah. So that's 30,000 feet. You're getting fired up and I like it. I know. <laughs> um, so there's a couple questions coming in on the chat. So uh, Lauren Elinsky says, Hannah, how do you start that journey to live the life you love? to choose yourself? I love that question. Here's what I'll say, Lauren, for the longest time, and I can show you, like in my office, I have I have self-help books everywhere. My Audible is overloaded with self-help books. 
And I kept looking in all these pages for my purpose and what I should be doing. And it wasn't until my OP said, why don't you start a women's group? That I was like, well, because who would do that? Why would I do that? I can't do that. Who would listen to me? And it was him saying, why not you? And him reminding me, you are enough, that made me actually just take the next best step. And the next best step was making a phone call to Kim and saying, I'm struggling. How did you do what you did as a woman and a mom? And then she told me, let's get together with some other people. It's just, it's these tiny bite sized steps. But I was looking for the answer in all these books. When in fact, I just needed to look within and be like, what do I want? And now it's, you see how passionate I get about it. Like now I realize, I, I, I thought about this recently. I, when I was younger, would see people like with beach houses and private jets or whatever. And I'm like, oh, that's cool for them. Lucky for them. Not that I need a private jet, but I'm in a position now, not literally as team leader, although I wish we made that much money. <laughs> um, it's coming. I'm in a position, it is coming, where I wholeheartedly believe if I want a private jet, damn, I can get a private jet. Like, I believe I have access to whatever I want in life. And I do think that's rooted in confidence. And a lot of that is not from within me. That's the environment of support that I've put myself in. Yeah. Like, but I had a friend this year that gave up toxic friends for Lent. Let's do more of that, right? Like, get rid of the people that are bringing you down. Hopefully, it's not your significant other. But if <laughs> it is, my God, you know, like, we don't have time for that. So you've got to put yourself in an environment of support. And there are people in my world that support me whose dreams aren't as big as mine, but they still support what I want to create. Yeah. So the other piece of that is find people whose dreams are bigger than yours. Yeah. That's motivating as hell. Yeah. Um, okay. Another question. Uh, Brie Vaughn says, hey. Oh. And then she's watching in. And her question is, who are the women that have poured into you and inspired you? That, I love that question. So one is my lender. The, or not even my lender. I've never done a deal with her. But our movement mortgage gal, Kim Winters. Yeah. I co-founded Power of Women with her. And she's... I don't even know how old she is, probably 10 years older than me, hopefully, maybe five. I hope she doesn't hear me say that. <laughs> uh, but she's literally walked all the steps that I am walking, but, and she's been amazing. And I say this kind of jokingly, but honest to God, my operating principal, who is a man, is one of my best girlfriends. I say it all the time, but like he has supported me so much. And so it's, it's not, you know, it's, I say that, about her age and then Jeff's older than me too. I have close girlfriends. I don't have many because that's one thing I've started to get. I'm like, I have a lot of acquaintances, but they're not that many people in my inner circle. And that's by choice. But the people who have been most influential to me, Kim Winters, Jeff Stewart, and Jeannie Osnes, she's one of my business coaches. They're all older than me. So they're all, they've all already walked the, the path that I want to be on. And so I think that's a big piece of it. Like, who do you want to become? Who already is a version of that? Talk to them, right? Like, if there was a 22-year-old that wanted to know me and know how I've gotten to where I am, even though I don't feel like I'm the epitome of success by any means, I would be more than happy to share that. Because I want, she doesn't need to reinvent the wheel. I could say, hey, do this, this, and this. And she can pick and choose what she does. But so many people older than us that are honored to become that mentor or that guiding light, you just have to ask. Yeah. And quite frankly, I don't know if I should say it or not, but my OP felt that way and was like, well, who do I want to become? He was like, Gary Keller. He reached out to Gary Keller and now he coaches with Gary Keller. Like, don't be afraid to ask. Just ask. Worst case, they'll say not interested. And then they're not your people anyway. Yeah. Yeah. One of the, to go along with piggyback on what you just said, one of the coolest lessons that I, that I learned, and it was actually in the form of a sermon, was to is three main three people you need in your life one being somebody that is where you want to go somebody beside you that is walking the same journey that you want to walk to get to where you want to go and then somebody behind you that wants to get to where you are That's and cool. yeah those three people i think is so cool to have have the visionary and the place that you want to go but you got the walking partner but somebody else that you can bring up to where you are so yeah i totally agree with that um I mean, I think that's personally or professionally. 
And maybe they're yeah, hundred percent. Maybe, maybe you have two different boards of directors. You got a personal board of directors. You have a personal. Yeah. Professor. And, um, and to that point, I talk all the time. I have a business coach. I have a therapist. I have those three mentors I just mentioned. Like there are a lot of people in my world reminding me, like you are enough. Keep going. Yeah. Try harder. Take a rest. I mean, who knows? It's just there's no way anybody in this world does anything alone. You just got to let people in. And like I said, that vulnerability creates connection beyond anything I could have ever dreamed of. And there's a difference in vulnerability and oversharing. <coughs> oh, right? yeah. Yeah. Like, let's be tasteful. And yeah. But if you're authentically you, people can't help but like that. Yeah. I'm looking through here. Make sure I didn't miss any questions. Oh, we've already been on here 25 minutes. I wondered what we were going to talk about for 30 minutes, Andy, and here we've almost done Hey, it. look, it always handles itself. <laughs> um, that is all of them. Do okay. you have anything for me? I love it. No, I love what you've created, and now I'm going to copy you. That's one thing that I love about Keller Williams. None of us, especially in leadership, are reinventing the wheel. We take stuff from, I mean, kind of rip stuff off from other people yeah. all the time. So I see what you're doing. I'm like, well, wait, I want to do that. Especially if you have agents that find value in it, I think it's incredible. It's it's crazy. Every every single person that I have asked from Jason Abrams to Mark King to any uh, wealth managers in California, every single one of them has said yes. So, um, I've, yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, well, it's one, a testament to you, because obviously people are like, yeah, we want to be part of what you're doing. But two, just a plug for KW. In my just over five years with KW, I've never once picked up the phone to call a KW person and ask for help and them tell me no. Yeah, ever. The culture of sharing is so alive and well in our company and it's what I'm most proud of. Yeah, I um, totally and agree. And I hope that that's how agents feel as well. That's definitely how I feel on the leadership side of it. Well, um, obviously it's been an incredible 27 minutes from yeah. the questions and the comments and everything on here. So I can't thank you enough for spending 30 minutes of your busy day with me thank and um, anything that I got, I respect you and I think you're incredible and thank I you. watch you from Burlington and I, I try my best to copy certain people and I you're one it. of those people. And so if there's anything that I can ever do for you, please, you've got my number, reach out and let me know. I love that. Well, tell everybody, shameless plug, follow me on Instagram, HP Kit. And Andy does. You see how cute my kids are. Yeah. Um, but there's a lot of leadership stuff that I post too. So that's that's really important to me that we all, we lift as we climb, right? That's and I right. think that's something we all need to remember every day, especially within the real estate industry. And when you get your show going, shoot me an invite. I will. We'll light awesome. them up. Yes, I love it. You guys, thank you so much. Happy Wednesday. All right. I appreciate you. We'll talk to you soon. Appreciate you. Bye, right, Andy. See ya.